Hey, everybody, welcome to the Triple B Experience podcast. Uh, and you know the saying by now, we're more than just a podcast. We are an experience. I'm producer and co-host Gary D. This guy right here. Hey, is, guys. <laughs> he is the uh, star of Cable's Cuts uh, and the Triple B Showcase on our YouTube channel. Uh, and it is Caleb Thomas, a.k.a. Cable. How's it going, man? Not too bad. Not too bad. Thanks for the intro. Absolutely. Um, all my stuff shows how much of a life I don't have, but I'm excited <laughs> for tonight. Seems like it's going to be a good interview. Well, that's that's why we love you. Uh, you you put out <laughs> another uh, video again this week, uh, which was a really cool video. Um, so collecting more of those figures that you have behind you um, and, and, and putting out some good stuff. Uh, what, what, what's next? What are you looking for? Uh, well, Doctor Strange stuff. I got, you know, I'm waiting for the movie to come out. I have almost the entire movie wave. I'm going to do a big unboxing, probably post it the weekend of the movie, maybe get a couple views. I don't know, drum up some attention. Nice, nice. So uh, I guess we should bring in Bubba, huh? I guess. Okay, I guess we'll bring him in. But last and certainly not least, the main event, the major attraction, the must-see, Mr. Triple B, Bad Bubba Brewer. What's up, Bubs? Good no. evening. Oh, bring him in. You I'm the anchor. Forget. The anchor. I got to come in. But you uh, think we forget I, about you. No, sometimes you, know, you guys do, but that's okay. How you guys doing tonight? Uh, we're doing, man. Uh, Great. It's been How crazy, are you? Crazy I'm, week. I'm but. good, and I'm excited for this guest that we have today because professional wrestling is all part of our lives, and uh, I, I love to hear this story, and it is uh, the biggest time of the year with big shows, big pay-per-views. I just watched the NWA uh, Crockett Cup this weekend, so I, I'm I'm excited about the wrestling stuff that's going on in the world. I, I you, you know me, so it's that time of year, and this guest has probably got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, as Bubba mentioned, we have a special guest tonight, uh, professional wrestler uh, Jake Logan. Uh, but enough with the banter uh, and the ribbing of Bubba, because uh, you know <laughs> we have shit to say. Uh, so we're gonna bring in Jake now. Hey, Jake, how's it going, man? Good. Hey. How are you guys? Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being here, Jake. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. absolutely. Um, so welcome to the Triple B Experience podcast. Again, thanks for joining us. Uh, but nobody knows you better than yourself. So why don't you why don't you introduce yourself, uh, you know, who you are, where you're from, what's good in life, anything you want people to know about you? Sure. Um, where do I begin? Uh, I've been wrestling for 12 years. I've been around the professional wrestling business for 21 years. My dad owns Top of Texas Pro Wrestling in Amarillo, Texas. Nice. Uh, he's been running every Saturday night for the last 16 years. Wow. Um, I'm the uh, I'm a I'm a former and the youngest NWA national champion in history. I won it in 2016, uh, and I am now a part of CYN Control Your Narrative with uh, EC3 Adam Share, who used to be Braun Strowman, and Austin Aries and Killer Cross. Nice. Ooh, this nice. is nice. So, yeah. All good stuff. Definitely a good starting point. But we do uh, like to, to give all of our guests a, a an icebreaker, uh, you know, loosen them up, you know, ease into things. Uh, so it's it's a random question. Uh, you know, some of them are fun. Some of them are serious. Uh, you got a fun one. At least I think it's kind of funny. Um, so your icebreaker is, uh, would you rather be best friends with Justin Timberlake or Justin Bieber? Timberlake. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, any reason why? I have to know. Uh, just never gotten into Bieber. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. Plus, yeah. Justin Timberlake, like he shows all his like comedic sides to him, and I loved him when he would he was uh, with the Lonely Island and everything like that. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he'd have he'd be fun to have some drinks with. 
He would be. Yeah. Yeah. He would be. Uh, and then you can convince him to be your manager for a show or two. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, right. no, and, and who can forget InSync? I loved InSync. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome that you admitted that. Um, yeah. Even hey, if I hey, did my workout, my workout playlist consists of Britney Spears, the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> Uh, in sync, Woo, yeah. that's awesome. You would get you along with my here, wife. Folks. <laughs> you, you definitely get along with my wife, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, if if I if even if I did like that style of music, I, I wouldn't admit it. And you are a much bigger <laughs> man than I am, so I mean, that's uh, why he can't Matt, admit it, Matt. Matt that's probably, why. You don't yeah. like me, fight me. That's my <laughs> say. <sense. laughs> you know, we were gonna get into that, yeah. Uh, well, so far, I do like you, and I definitely don't want to fight you. Uh, but believe it or not, Jake, um, all of us have had, um, uh, our time within uh, indie wrestling, believe it or not, uh, in one way or another. Um, so uh, it, it's truly, yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> it's truly an honor to have you here. I got um, a couple so. hot dogs and a Coke, you know, hot goes. <laughs> yeah. and, and a handshake or two. You know, yep. It is what it is. Um, you know, but, you know, first things first, when did wrestling first become a thing for you? Like, what what is your first wrestling memory? Uh, I, I can't tell you what age I was specifically. I just remember my dad and I watching the Monday Night Wars, flipping over to WCW when WWF was on commercial and vice versa <laughs> for WCW, you know. Um, but my dad got into it when I was really young, uh, as far as like he entered the business and um, he trained to be a professional manager outside the ring. And so I was going to all these shows and and watching it on TV is is one thing, but seeing professional wrestling live in person in your face, that's a whole different world. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I absolutely loved it. Um, I, I think the match that made me want to become a wrestler the most though, was Chris Jericho versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 19. Nice. Um, Chris Jericho is my idol. Uh, I've been blessed to be able to actually tell him that. I actually got to tell Shawn Michaels a couple of months ago that that's the match that got me into wrestling. Wow. Um, and he said verbatim, that's awesome. Thank you. I'm sorry I got you into this shitty business. <laughs> <laughs> Just as you apologized to us for uh, being a part of the wrestling. Yeah, no, we, we get it. Uh, though I have to ask, um, how did you cross paths with him? Like, how did that happen? So I... Uh, Every so often, WWE will contact me to do uh, extra talent work for them. Uh, I've been consistently doing extra work for, for them since 2016. Okay. Uh, I've done extra work for AEW uh, quite a few times in 2021. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. That's awesome. That yeah, that's great. Did they contact you, Jake, a lot during this COVID time? And how hard uh, was that to work during this COVID time? Somewhat. There was a point where they didn't want to use extras for for a little while because they wanted to use the bodies that were in the performance center the already employed people before the 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 outsiders i guess mm -hmm. um but while covid was still a thing i did get to i did get to go and be uh do extra work which is cool um i was actually there ju uh just last night actually so oh okay, okay. nice uh so on that note and maybe, you know, if you don't want to answer anything, you don't want to answer, that's fine. But I'm just curious what the difference in the, uh, you know, the atmosphere and the environment of the locker rooms are. Is there a difference? Does it feel the same? Both, you are, know? both are pretty positive, man. Um, I mean, you've got your ones. Uh, I, I would say the higher up guys who kind of turn your turn their nose up at you, um, which can be frustrating. But, you know, it is what it is. Um but both locker rooms are typically pretty positive. Nice. Good. Okay. Um, so take us back. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, your dad runs indie wrestling in Texas. Is that where you're from? Uh, so, yeah, pretty much. I grew up the first uh, nine and a half years of my life in Georgia. Uh, okay. That's where my dad got started. And then my dad started owning his own promotion when we moved to Texas. Okay. So gotcha. Um, does he still does he still um run shows all the time or is he every just Saturday doing, night? Every Saturday night years, he said. That's oh, amazing. Wow. Uh because you know Whew. God uh, bless again, him. being a part of 2650 Dumas Drive, Amarillo, Texas show starts every Saturday at 7 p.m. 
That's amazing. That's awesome. Are nice. you still you still a part of that at all? Or yeah, I'll be there April second. Okay, cool. So cool. it's spot bookings. It's not necessarily consistently right. Well, I live in Florida way. now. So, okay. Um, uh, we I moved to Florida. Me and my wife moved here about three years ago. Uh, the goal was to get closer to the bigger companies. Yeah, makes and sense. Um, we both are in agreement that it's the best decision we've ever made. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's good. Yeah. Florida I gotta love is, that sunshine. For Florida sure. is the hot spot. I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm, Florida is right. the hot spot. Um, so again, take, take us back. Uh, who trained you? Who, who, who like, uh, is it one who, person, multiple people? Who, who do you, who do you consider your trainer? So whenever I was coming up in the business, uh, it was real spotty. So it was like a little bit of everyone, um, good and bad. Uh, I've learned a lot of do's and don'ts in this business. <laughs> um, by the time I was about three years in, I had just graduated high school and my dad and I sat down and we were looking at places that I could go to get crispened up. And around this time, man, I, I thought my shit didn't stink. I was cocky. <laughs> I was arrogant. I was brash. Um, and I thought I could take any anybody in this world head on. Uh, so we decided on Dory Funk Junior School in Ocala, Florida. Dory's both from Amarillo, Texas, a WWE Hall of Famer. We thought, why not? You know, right? I get there, and Dory was able to move a little bit more around okay. this time. He's he's quite a bit older now. I was um, going to ask that. I was going to ask that. He's yeah, he's uh, he's eighty one. Oh wow! Wow. Um, but. When I was there, he was he was still doing matches, um, and this was almost ten years ago. Um, so I get there, and he humbled me up real quick. I was there with him for three months, and everything I thought I knew was just insanely fine tuned. Was it the first day that he? Did he, uh, you said he humbled you. Was it the first day or the first week? Probably all three months. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I know. Yeah. But you know it what was I mean? All like, three months pretty much. Cause, yeah. cause that attitude, that attitude would start to come up and he just mm. pounded hmm. right back into the ground, you know, like, yeah. um, and I'm super thankful for that. I, that's something I needed. Yeah. Um, it's, he taught me so much that I still carry with me today. Um, and then like, as a professional wrestler, you're never done learning. Uh, July of 2020, while COVID was running rampant, uh, I went out to Dr. Tom Pritchard's. Nice. Uh, stayed, nice. I stayed with him for a week. Um, and even even like he was able to fine tune, like he tightened in the screws extra tight uh, on the screws that Dory tightened. Yep. So mm-hmm. it was just, that was a phenomenal weekend. And I was, I, I've had some thoughts about going back too and like getting some extra training with them and everything. Um, wrestling's picked up a lot lately, so it'd be nothing for me to just go out there, you know? Well, here's a question I think that comes up a lot in a situation like yours with varied answers. So you see the Jericho Shawn Michaels match, and you're like, this is what I want to do. You go to your dad and you tell him. How did he feel about that? Did he want you in the business, or did he want you staying away from the business? I'd say besides my wife, my dad is the biggest supporter I have, which that's amazing. Um, that's, <laughs> awesome. that's awesome. He, he tells me all the time, you know, uh, the reason I run my business is for you. Um, that's great. Yeah. It's still to this day. It's, it's so that I pl- have a place to come home and ha- I have my playground when, oh, yes. when the time comes that my dad stops running shows. Uh, my job is to go out to Amarillo, Texas, grab a trailer and pick up the ring and bring it to wherever I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, family business. Yeah, that's right. It really is. My dad owns it. Uh, I wrestle. My brother-in-law wrestles. My sister's the photographer. Right. My mom does the music. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. awesome! Yeah. That's, that's really amazing. Cool. That, yeah, that that is an awesome family. Uh, <laughs> you were you were very fortunate. Uh, I know it's not easy running indie wrestling, and for right. doing it for sixteen I, uh, years consecutively is amazing. Thank you, thank you. I, I tell people all the time that I was very blessed because I literally grew up with a wrestling ring in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah that was a dream a few of us had but yeah, yeah that's great to be able to say and, that and also jake when you have your dad and your family behind you 100 or 150 percent, it makes it more that you the, the it's not as it, it's just driven the desire is there and that is special 
Because it's very yeah. hard when some families don't like that dream that wrestlers mm -hmm. get into, and it's hard. But uh, yeah. you just stated your whole family's in it, and they have certain parts that they do. Mm -hmm. And now let me ask you, when you started with your dad's company, was you uh, a, a face or a heel? Fun fact, um, for the first three years of my career, I was not even allowed to be a heel. Mm -hmm. Okay. My dad, if I – the most I was able to travel, because I was still in high school, um, the most I was able to travel was to so anywhere in Texas, over to New Mexico, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Colorado. Wow. Uh, any, any of those, um, yeah, any of those bookings, I was only allowed to be a baby face. My dad handled all of that, and I hated it. At the time, I hated it. <laughs> I always wanted to be the bad guy. Like, it got to a point where in Amarillo – the fans started chanting Jake Cena at me. Oh, <laughs> ultimate insult. Right? That point. Once it got to the very tip, my dad was like, it's time. Yep. Well, at least he recognized that. We have yes. some, some billionaires that don't recognize when it's time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I said it, Jake, not you. Um, so just, just putting that out there. Uh, but hey, any, I have to ask, any um, amateur wrestling background for you? I wish, man. I really, okay. really wish. Uh, okay. My high school in uh, Amarillo, Texas didn't have it. Uh, they got rid of it probably three years before I moved there. Gotcha. Um, did you, but did... I have encountered many, many amateur wrestling background people uh, mm -hmm. who I was able to come up with in the business um, and, and learn a lot of that style. Did you uh, play yeah. any sports growing up? Yeah, I did. Uh, I did football. Okay. I did track and field. Um, a little bit of cross country, uh, no basketball. I couldn't get into it. Um, and, uh, you're, you're a taller guy though, aren't you? What yeah, I'm about six one. Yeah. So that's, you know, pretty good size, but no, no basketball, huh? No, not no. for me. Hey, that's okay. I watch wrestling like a real man. Yeah. Well, I get it. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, we're in Pittsburgh and basketball is not really a thing here either. You know? Nope. Yeah. Um, Thank God. But, you know, it, ser <laughs> it serves its purpose. High school and, uh, stuff and college, but no pros. That's so cool. it's it's been all pro wrestling all the time. For yeah, man, I missed young. junior and senior prom because I was wrestling. There's so wow. many things that that, that would have been an honor school, for me. Man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know Cable probably would have preferred it too because he got booed off the stage at our prom for doing karaoke. Uh, just, just saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> those memories you're not you don't hold on to those like you do wrestling memories. No, so. I, don't, <laughs> exactly. I don't remember any of mine because I was drinking, so I have no clue. <laughs> I don't even know what time I left. So. so, so Jake, definitely no regrets there. You you know, do your thing. Get yeah, out man. there and work as much as possible, for sure. Well, I have a question before we get into anything else. Just yeah. I've never even thought of this, I guess, or really had my attention drawn to it. What is the indie scene like out mm -hmm. in the Midwest there Great in question. those states? Um, cause I don't hear about those States very often. So Texas is, is a hotbed for wrestling. Mm -hmm. really is. However, um, you can run into, to them anywhere, a bunch of egos and assholes. Uh, you got, you got your good ones out there, but I, Texas can get pretty full of them. Mm -hmm. Um, I was glad that I got out of there when I did, um, because yeah. I was becoming one of them, you know, uh, mm -hmm. um, I moved out here to Florida even my wife, she was like, yeah, a few years ago, you were an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably a defense mechanism, right? Probably. You, yeah. you pick up that trait. Yeah. yeah. Well, now you got the beach vibes going. So. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Calm and collected. But isn't Texas wrestling, Jake, a little bit more like hardcore? Like back in the day, I mean, when I, I remember Texas wrestling, like with Gino Hernandez and Blanchard and all that, was it a little bit more hardcore than Hard maybe other in, independent wrestling companies in the United States? I wouldn't say hardcore. I mean, you got old guys school, tough, like, like, like tougher, like old tougher, school. Yeah. old school toughness. I, I shouldn't say hardcore, like old school uh, mentality. You, you know, being in Texas, you would think, uh, but there's so many guys out there uh, who you know, you get in their face and they back down, you know? Oh, okay. No. <laughs> uh, yep. Many encounters yep. like that. I mean, you do have your tough guys out there. Don't get me wrong. Um, mm -hmm. I'd probably have to say the toughest person in Texas right now is Rodney Mack. Okay. okay. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, just seen it. I can Sunday, see that. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So I, I have to ask, you know, just to build on Cable's question there. So you said your dad's been doing this for 16 consecutive years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I mentioned, you know, indie wrestling's tough. It's a tough gig. So what is he drawing there? Is he drawing a still drawing a good crowd? You know, well, with with running a weekly professional wrestling show, you weekly. have you, wow. you of course are going to have your your dead times. Um, and it's not it's not even a seasonal thing. It's like every so often the crowd's low, you know, but my dad at the same time, like even if the crowd is low, 100 percent, he promises any any type of pay that he promises, he delivers. Yeah, he's mm. never stiffed anybody. He's never done wrong to anybody. If you can get your pay in Amarillo uh, from my dad, you're lying. Um, yeah. Now going back uh, to, to your question, like there's been times where we've we've gotten maybe maybe 45 people in the crowd. There's been times where we've gotten 300 in the crowd. You know, just adjusted, just yeah. adjusted. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that's pretty much the same with the Pennsylvania scene. I feel. You yeah. Know. Now, uh, can I can I ask you another question, Jake? Now, being no. working for your dad. <laughs> you. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> told I'm you done. To shut up. I'm done. Hey, I'll, well, I'll, I'll ask drop them off. Here. Yeah, <laughs> drop them off. <laughs> I'm done. I'm going home. When I live here. <laughs> What's up, <I'm>, man? <laughs> being working for your dad, did other wrestlers, you know, be a smart ass and give you shit because they maybe wanted your spot? That's one of the reasons I left Texas. Oh. Okay. Uh, Going going through Texas and oh, so I've been wrestling for twelve years this year. Uh, I left when I was ten years in, uh, nine years in, and um, it was the throughout my entire wrestling career up until I moved. It was you don't have to work as hard because you're the owner's son. When in reality, wow. I've had to work twice as hard, and I, I don't try right. to brag about that or anything. I I. I'm dedicated to it, you know, like I, I love wrestling. So I'm going to, I'm going to put the work in, but at the same time, like it, it can get down on you when so many people are like, Oh, you, you haven't had to work for anything hard in your life. When I got the NWA national title, so many people turned their nose up at me. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's BS. So, but what you know, it is, what it is. It's, 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 uh, it's a jealousy thing. And you know, those are the people I don't care to associate with. So, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Well, it's a very think, vain company or uh, industry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I navigating the politics was tough. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I, I often say that uh, I was always too honest for the wrestling business. Uh, <laughs> I don't regret anything I did in it. I loved it. Uh, I met the, you know, well, cable has been like my best friend since uh, elementary school, but I got to meet Bubba. I got to meet so many cool people. Uh, we wouldn't change a thing. And it's not always about, what it was going on in the ring. It was about the road trips and the boys and the camaraderie, yeah. um, you know, so uh, some of the best I, that's times what, of my life for that, sure. That's what I missed that too, but I don't miss losing thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah. <on the> shows. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. You know, so I can, I can see how your dad and I, and I feel for your dad when, you know, you're getting 45 one show and then you got to wait till you get that 300. Yeah. You got to just keep it going. And it's very, very stressful. Oh I mean, yeah. It stressed me yeah. to hell out when I was running. Oh, and crushing. I give it to my dad because there's been so many complications with him. Like as far as um, health wise, he's, he only recently found out that he had severe PTSD from both oh, man. his Sorry. childhood and the military. Um, oh, he's, he's had to take stress tests because there he's had pro heart problems and, you know, we can only reflect it back to both his PTSD and professional wrestling. Yeah. So, no. but my dad, like, like I said, he's one of my biggest supporters out there, and I wouldn't be where I am today without him. So, what what part of the military, or like, what branch of the military was he in? He was in. He was, uh, he was in the army for nice. eleven years. I was born in Germany. Okay. Wow. 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 Oh, okay. How about cool. that? That's interesting. Wow. Okay. Um. So, what would you have done if you weren't a wrestler? What do you think you'd be right now? Would it be the military? Uh, you know, I had thoughts of it in high school. Um, my, my plans were for the Marines, but my dad also hated that. He's like, they're the first in battle. I don't yeah, want you going to the Marines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I had also thought about being a firefighter, uh, and that's due to my cousin, Danny on my mom, my, my mom's sister's son. 
Uh, he is a chief right now, but before he got that, I knew him to, most of his time as a firefighter. Um, and going going to visit him in Colorado when I was a kid was just one of the coolest things ever, seeing how he lived, like how he bunked with the other guys, uh, what he would be able to do whenever he's not on call or whatever. It was, it was really cool. Um, right now, uh, just for a fallback plan, because you never know what can happen, I'm looking into flight aviation. Oh, wow. 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 Yeah. Good for you. That's so cool. was, um, was it straight to wrestling after high school? Or, you know, yeah, did you go I was only wrestling before I graduated. Okay. So that was nice. your job. That was your job as mm -hmm. soon as you, th yes, that was yeah, your job. So, yeah. so my dad had always told me once, once I took my first bump, I took my first bump at eight years old. Um, <laughs> Work, working at nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. My dad always told me that I couldn't, uh, I could start wrestling when I turned 17. In the state okay. of Texas, you can be tried as an adult at 17 years old. Okay. So okay. my first match happened on my 17th birthday. <laughs> oh, nice. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, that's right. awesome. So and who, who was that. your opponent? Yeah, who was your opponent? Uh, so if you know any like Texas uh, history or anything, uh, there's a guy by the name of Mr. Ebony Tom Jones, who's a legend in this business today, at least through Texas wrestling. I wrestled against his son, Cody Jones. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Nice. Wow. So how'd, how'd that go for you? Did did dad, uh, you know, you know, made sure you paid your dues on the first match? <laughs> you, you know, well, you know, first did match, he put you over? first match I got put over, but okay. I was in two matches that night. Um, I won the first match because of a, a schoolboy roll up. And um, the second match, because it was part of an angle, it was an eight man tag team match where I took the heat and then only to be tagged back in to take the finisher so <laughs> <laughs> so there you go gotcha yeah so, so, so not only did you want you win but you also paid a little bit of your dues so yeah yeah i mean as it far was. as as far as dues go i i encourage everybody you know i you know you i think your first match you're graduating training yep. give them the win who's it gonna hurt you're you're an independent wrestler you know yeah, yeah. that's their reward give it to them um yep. As far as paying your dues, like, you know, when you're a trainee, you help set up, tear down the ring, all yep. that. You you do everything yep. you can to make sure that you're dedicated 100% to this business. So, and I think my dad's kind of in the same boat. You, If you're a trainee, you know, you graduate training, congratulations. Here's your first match. You go over, but don't expect it to be easy. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Right. So you might not be at this point yet, even still, but was there a point as you were coming up and you were starting to travel and stuff where you were, uh, I guess, feeling confident enough and you were like, you know, I think I'm going to make a go of this. I think this is, I, I, I like where I'm at. I think this is what I'm going to be able to do, you know, or did you have a feeling from the get go or are you still like, there's been, just, you have a drive for more. There's been times where, I've gotten down on myself and I I've had to ask myself, is this really like, can I do this like full time? And, and I've, I've never, I've never doubted my dedication to professional wrestling. Um, I've invested all that I can into the business. Um, sometimes to reap a huge reward, sometimes to reap nothing at all, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but it's only been recently where, I've been able to drop down to a part-time job and, and, you know, actually start paying a lot of my bills with professional wrestling. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. gotta be a good feeling for sure. Uh, so what, what are the current promotions that you're working for? Um, you know, I know a few, uh, but <laughs> Explain uh, you know, explain this new one that you are in. Cause you showed sure. me the video and I watched that mm -hmm. and it's a different concept. If I so say. I'm with uh, EC3, Adam Scher, formerly known as Braun Strowman, Austin Aries, Killer Cross. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing uh, Control Your Narrative, CYN. Yep. And we had our first live event on March 5th. Let me backtrack. Okay. Uh, we've done two movies, mm -hmm. cinematic professional wrestling movies. And they're both on YouTube. They're under Free the Narrative. Um, and there's a little, there's a little angle in... There's, there's a bunch of storylines. Everybody's there to tell their story, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, my story starts 
at the beginning of both Free the Narrative 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to give anything away because I want people to go to go watch it because we're going to have the third one come out later this year. Nice. Um, yeah, I watched I watched it, Jake. It was more like a like it seemed super real when guys are getting in the trucks and talking about where they're going and it was uh they fought in this place where no one knew and it was like it was more hard. No spoilers, Bubba. Yeah, no. I'm not no, I'm I I I watched it. No, I watched it. I'm not yeah. going to spoilers. <laughs> But, but for people that have it, yeah, but I yeah. mean, it was just, it, it seemed like an underground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a, kind of. Um, so I'd be lying if I said it, it wasn't based on fight club. Um, <laughs> what that's, movie? Fight club. It, it works out because that's my favorite movie. So yeah, nice. nice. Okay. But, um, yeah. Uh, through the narrative is to tell your story. So yep. we, we just had a show March 5th. It was our first live event in Orlando at the tin roof. And it went over without a hitch. Like it was sold out completely. Um, Congratulations! It was, Congratulations! It was a huge event, man. It was it was awesome. We have our next one on the thirty first in Dallas at uh, Gillies. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, the famous Gillies. Yeah, yeah, that's famous. That's famous. Yeah, we'll be at the Southside Music Hall. Oh yeah! Um, if you guys happen to be there, I encourage you to come out. <laughs> I'll get my wow. charter plane. I got it in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I have, uh, I went to WrestleMania a few years ago. Sorry not to cut you off. I want you to continue. But uh, a few years ago uh, in Texas, which was awesome. Uh, I can't say I plan on going back this year, though. I would, I would like to catch you guys, though. That would have been awesome. But uh, the big, the big grand show, uh, you know, maybe not so much. You but, said you guys are in Philly? Uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh area. Pittsburgh. Okay. Yeah, which I think you guys are going to be in Cleveland. We are going to be yes. in Cleveland on yep. May 13th or May May 13th and then Detroit on May 14th. Okay. Okay. So Good you're, to know. you're making towns there. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the goal. Florida, man. Texas. That's well, the goal. If okay. uh, And the best thing about it is there's no contracts. Like we're not signed to anything. So no. nobody will get signed to any type of contract through the narrative. You are free to do as you please. And when you are at the narrative, you tell your story through fighting. Okay. So it's an interesting concept. That and, is. Uh, I'll yeah. be honest with you. Um, I think, you know, the part that I've seen with you in it, and I'm not going to give stuff away. Uh, you know, EC3 promo gave me chills. Yeah. Like it really <laughs> did. Um, well, that guy, he, he could always cut promos. I mean, he oh, really, yeah, really yeah. could, but this one I in particular. I, I can't tell you how much he's helped me with mine. Like I met him in August of 2020. Uh coming from a show in Dallas because I was already living in Florida. The plan was for me to fly there with EC3 and fly back with him. Unfortunately, I missed my flight going there. But on the way back, that's when I was able to because he was he was already starting this essential character, you know, and it was similar to some ideas that I wanted to start doing. So once he got or before he got released, I was like, oh, you know, I could do this, this and this. I, if you guys have ever seen Project, or I mean, uh, Fight Club, mm-hmm. they had this group called Project Mayhem, mm-hmm. and I wanted to do something similar, but I wanted to grab guys. So I wanted to be, I wanted to have it me in Florida, Cody Jones, who's in Chicago now, um, my buddy Tino Valentino in Texas, um, and then grab guys from from different states, and then like once we had a a, a good sized group, like once we got known for being affiliated with this once we came together it means so much more you know um and i told him this idea and it was similar to something he wanted to start however he wasn't keen on the whole guys being in different states um of course he's gonna have his projects for his for his um projects are, are our extras we call them projects okay and so they have their own project number it's it's a cool concept um but he he took my ideas, he listened to them, um, and he asked me if I would be interested in being his very first project. And so <laughs> through him and through JC, who is the narrator of the movies, really cool voice. You we were able too. to get this yeah. off the ground. Um, EC3 has helped me both with my diet, my weight, uh, my weight control, my nutrition, um, my uh, my workouts in the gym, my promos. Um, I wish I could say he's helped me in the ring, but we've never been in the ring together. Okay. Um, not not yet. yet. 
it'll come. Right. Yeah. It'll <laughs> so. come. Uh, but I, I must say, Jake, and I'm you know not hitting on you or anything, but you look like an absolute stud right now via camera because <laughs> no, um, you know I've, I've watched wife. I've watched your my wife, I watched your <laughs> Jake's wife, um, I watched a lot of your YouTube. You know, you have your channel there, and I watched some of your matches and promos and stuff like that. Um, and I tell you what, like it looks like I could see a transformation there, man. Thank I really you. do. So yeah, you look in, you look impressive. I mean, yeah. you're. The, the photo that we had for the show was impressive. And I seen some of your stuff on Facebook. So, I mean, whatever it, your training is starting to come to realization. So thank you. I appreciate that. And, and, and you said EC3 has a lot to do with that, huh? He does. He has everything to do with it. Wow. So, okay. Now, was it, was it like he was listening to you? And that's cool when someone's actually listening to your ideas and your yeah. concepts. So it makes you more invested in what's going to happen and what is going mm -hmm. on. You know, right. so that that's just awesome because a lot of people don't listen to anything anymore. Right. So, yeah. but that that is cool that he listened to you and and got you as a project and 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 started this new this new federation as we, I guess is that, is that what everybody calls it? Because there's a lot of spec. You know, I don't know what. I mean, they, we, the, we're not we're not looking to be a typical independent promotion. We like EC3 tells me all the time, get rid of the indie mindset. Um, Okay. Some days I don't even know what that means. Like <laughs> I've been in this for 21 years. Like, how do I do that? You know? Yeah. You but come from a family of indie, right? Like, and teach me a lot of stuff and I'm very thankful for it. Mm -hmm. um, the debt that I owe him could never be payable, but I will try to get as close as I can. So Jake, let me ask you something. How does this work? Right? Like, how does it work? To, it seems more cinematic, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, is there a lot of like stop and go when you're, when you're recording this stuff or do they let you like, you know, go through your matches like you typically would, um, like how does that work? Exactly? So we have a guy with a camera in the ring and, um, they say, do your match. We do okay. the match and they film it to the best of their ability abilities. We have multiple cameras though, so they can catch different, different scene or, uh, different views of, of what's going on. So. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. It's an interesting, mm -hmm. it's an interesting concept. Uh, it's real dark. Um, it, it's really cool. I, I, I was impressed. For but sure. also too, you, there's certain maneuvers that you guys can't do from what I read from the narrative. Is that correct well, too? So this is part of our rules and regulations. Um, okay. So, uh, Sorry. this, this has gotten a lot of flack. Okay. Uh, there's going to be things that we post that we want to make people think about. We want to, through this entire thing, we want people to think. We want people to try to figure us out. And once they think they have it, no. You know, yeah. we shut it right down. So with that, we came up with these rules and regulations. And number one being you are in control, right? You are in control of your own narrative. Right, you tell your story through your your fight. the The fight is with yourself, not your opponent. And uh, the main rule that's gotten under everybody's skin, and I love it because of that, is no super kicks, no tope suicidas. <laughs> yeah, and no <laughs> Canadian destroyers. So, how does that make you feel being a Shawn Michaels fan? No super kicks. <laughs> you, you weren't a guy that did super kicks anyway. I know. Uh, but no, it's an interesting concept. It really is. Um, but the, is there no like, uh, you know, high flying so, moves in general? Or is there just those there, moves that you, you there's going to be, there's, we're going to have our own, our, our, our people who have their own styles. Mm -hmm. But if, if, so your job is to tell your story through your own fight. Yeah. Right. So while you're in control, you still have to abide by rules. Right. Everybody in life has to abide by rules. Uh, if you go and rob a bank, you get taken to jail. You know, yep, if true. you throw a super kick in a match, we're getting you out of there. Mm -hmm. That's not now, that's not. Now, what do you do if good. that happens? You said get them out of there. Like what would happen if someone throws a super kick? in the match? Um, they can't work no more or they're done, done in the or? match. You That's try it. to tell your story and you use a move that we didn't want. You're done telling your story for the night. So do they consider that a disqualification mm. or? I wouldn't say disqualification. It's um, just done. But yeah, it's done. done. You know, okay. 
So, Story's over for the night. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Story's over. Okay. I like what. Yeah. yeah. But what about it's if they. Very gonna, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about if they don't stop and they do a super kick and they don't stop? Where does that narrative go? Yeah, there's a locker room full of boys. You can. Okay. I mean, well, I'm. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm, I mean, and there's some big boys. You guys got. Oh, some yeah. They're big, all big boys. Well, they're well, all. We're going to tell our stories just like in professional wrestling. Everybody wants their spot, you know? Okay. And that's really come out of the woodworks whenever we started announcing this. Like, my DMs are going off yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah. But that's everybody great. wants their spot. And if you're breaking the rules blatantly okay. and you're not abiding by them, we're getting you the hell out of there, you know? Like, you don't deserve to be part of us. Right. That's awesome. Okay. That makes That's, me I think like of that. like early Ring of Honor mm -hmm. when, you know, they had to shake hands yep. and right. the pure title had all these different rules than the regular championship. Like outside the box, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get, you're going to grab eyes. You're going to get, you know, attention. Like you already said, you're getting flack over it and stuff. And any press is good press type scenario where yeah. if they're talking about you, you're doing something, right? Well, you know, exactly. the old NWA you back in the day, talk. you couldn't. We yep, want them. Broke. We want the higher up companies to keep spreading their lies. We want everybody to, whether good or bad, they're talking about us mm -hmm. right now. Yep. You know, we're we're up there as far as talks go. We're we're up there with WWE and AEW. They're talking about us. We're getting mm -hmm. through them. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. If, if somebody says CYN, if somebody says control your narrative to somebody else, that's spreading the word. Yeah. Yep. And if you don't like me, fight me. You know, it's that's, right. it is. <laughs> that's uh, a shirt. That's a shirt. That's, you probably got the shirt all, all right, ready to sell. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> ProWrestlingTees.com slash Jake Logan. It's already on there. But there the, old, nice. the, the awesome. old NWA did that too, right? They, you couldn't go over, over the, the top, top rope, rope back, mm -hmm. back in the day. Yeah, back in the day. So, um, yeah, back in the day, if you went over the top rope, you got disqualified. If you hit somebody with a closed hand punch, you got disqualified. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Now, so. is there any? Is there going to be any championships out of this? Control your narrative. I don't feel there's there's any need, need for it. Okay, because we're there to tell our story. We're mm -hmm. not there for titles or accolades. We're mm -hmm. there to tell our story. Okay. We're there Such for a cool concept, which yeah. is totally different. This concept is different yeah. than any other. Thing. Again, Absolutely, like, you know. like Cable mentioned, it's it has that Ring of Honor feel, or like Bubba with the, the NWA. They had their stipulations, but. Um, it's integrity. It, it's it's drawing traction because it's different, and there's something special about different. Yeah, um, and there's so. the uh, EC3 has said like, while we may not have any titles or anything, through telling your story, like you have that's to be your, fighting for something. So title. we might have something worth fighting for, right. but that's still very up in the air. We just want to be able to show the world who we are through our fight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a. Uh, I mean, we keep saying it, it's such a cool concept, and it's crazy. I mean, it's it, it's the ET, EC three is a brainstorm of this, right? Like he, this is oh, yeah. his. Well, it sounds like you got has, some uh, some some tips and uh, from, you know from some Jake from Jake too. So <laughs> yeah, uh, um, but a guy like him that was so underutilized, yeah, and to have such you know collaborative effort with you and come up with this awesome idea. It just shows what is out there in the wrestling community that is not having a light shown on it. Yeah. He, uh, he's definitely been my saving grace in professional wrestling. So, and I can't thank him enough. That, that's it's, saying something. And, and, and which means leads to my next question, biggest influence and, and influence is in wrestling. Uh, EC3 is one of them. Who else? He, yeah. These last few years, definitely EC3. Um, and then, I, I as a baby face, I always wanted to be Shawn Michaels. As a <laughs> girl, I always wanted to be Chris Jericho. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? um, I've awesome. been blessed to meet both of them and tell them both that they're the ones that got me into professional wrestling. Um, and yeah, so so it, some people say don't meet your heroes, but the the ones that I have, man, they they're top. They two. were all cool. They were all cool then. Absolutely. Usually, yeah, that's awesome. Let me, well, that's let me awesome to be able to say that. Let me ask you a question, Jake. Now, on on your biggest victory was when you did the national NWA national championship, being the youngest, mm -hmm. and that there's a whole lineage well, of. We're assuming that you're. I mean, you well, tell us. for right now, for right now, uh, well, in your in your history, 
because that's huge. I mean, the, the the people that held that title is the who's mm-hmm. who's of professional wrestling from the 70s yeah. to now. And you were the youngest person to win that title. So how did that how did that make you feel that night if you could take us back just a little bit to to win in that title? Cuz that's a that's a major title in the NWA. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. On that night, I was on cloud nine. And for that title reign, I was on cloud nine because that was a prestigious championship. Most One of the most prestigious things I'd ever done in my career. Now, today, it's still it's still a huge honor. Uh, Billy Corgan now owns the, the NWA. Uh, you know, with having with having that accolade, I would ho- I would have hoped that uh, he would reach out to me or you know, but he hasn't yet. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. Billy Corgan, if you're watching this, I, <laughs> call man. If you're watching and, this, my yes, God. that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> God bless America. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got a lot of t- to say about him about wrestling, music. We got a lot to talk yeah. about, Billy. But uh, Chris up, Masters is holding the NBA national title right now, right. and I've been in talks with him quite a bit. Uh, I've known him since 2016, and. He's given me some some people to try and contact and everything like that to try to get me there because I think it'd be huge to have the youngest person ever hold it to go against the current, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. No, Absolutely, but, yeah. yeah. And you're allowed so, to do that with uh, doing – control your narrative. You're allowed to do the other so there's stuff. There's no contracts. As as We're yeah, free, you do whatever you want. No, as long as it doesn't interfere with – say you have a show Friday night, control your narrative, and there's an NWA title shot – you got to take the control of your narrative. Well, that's that's going to be ultimately up to me. Okay. At this point, at, like right now, it's CYN. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what what do you what do those guys tell you? Uh, you know, you've done some work for WWE and you've done some work for AEW. Um, do they they tell you to tread with caution, or do they say, "Dude, just go for it"? Do they? You know, is it is that ever in the back of your mind? Well, you know? last night. Uh, was the first time that I was doing extra work for NXT since all of this blew up. Um, and nobody's really said much to me about it. The The friends that I have there, we've talked. Um, but as far as like anybody higher up, I had a, I had a tryout in WWE in May. Um, and like those coaches, like they, they'll still say hi to me and like ask me how I'm doing and everything when, I, when I'm there doing extra work, but they haven't – ask me anything about what's going on in, in the independent scene for me in my life, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe I want them to, maybe I want them to see all that. And I want them to be like, Oh man, like look what he's doing now. Like mm-hmm. we should have grabbed him when, when we had the chance. Well, you know, they're watching, yeah. you know, they're watching. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. They got eyes and ears everywhere. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> right. Right. Um, I mean, yeah. Uh, as a kid, as a kid, the ultimate goal was WWE. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. Once AEW came out, I thought maybe I'd want to go over there. Um, I like them. I do. Uh, there's just there's just such an influx of talent over there that's kind of. I'd hate to be lost in the in the shuffle. There's a yeah. lot of talent. Yeah. Yeah. The opportunities over there have to be scarce for those who were born and raised on the independents. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. WWE, uh, you know, they're they're high on college athletes right now. They want athletes straight out of college to and they want to teach them the WWE way. That's great. Yep. That's you and know, young. If that's you how are. you're gonna make your money and you're gonna be successful at it, don't broke with don't don't fix what's not broken. You know? Right. Um, yeah. but I, I would say ultimately the goal would still be WWE because I would want to have something one hundred percent secure to take care of my family and me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's a good. It's a good answer. Uh, though, if you if you got called up to WWE and they said, "Okay, Jake, we're gonna make you a um, blood sucking clown," right? Would it be worth it to you? Show me the money. You know. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. If you're gonna make me a blood sucking clown, and I'm leaving the office with a Five hundred thousand dollar contract. Suck away. Yeah, hands, right. you know? yeah. Like, yeah. I'm I'm gonna be able to take care of my family. My wife and I want to have kids. You know, yeah. I want to put a roof over their head. Yeah, you and then that, that's an answer that I wouldn't 
you know, that, that's the exact answer I would expect you to say is I should, you know, yeah, uh, just curious, true. just curious to what your mindset is. You know, a lot of people uh, have this, you know, WWE has a stigma at this point where, uh, you know, yeah. um, but just curious. That's all. Yeah. Good well, answer. Is, Good answer. The, the stigma it, with, with not having uh, independent guys getting hired by WWE and doing the college route, they're not getting they're they're not getting trained and getting stuff and getting uh, yeah. reps. Like it's the just, life experience. It's, right. it's just so different doing stuff on the road and, and getting there and then getting hired by WWE and doing the WWE way. But now it's like, oh, they're, they're, it's cookie cutted out of the college ranks, you know, because they're athletes and then they get make them the way they want to, but they're still mm. missing something, I believe. They're yeah, missing they're that gonna, in tangent. They're, they're missing stuff. dusty roads. They're missing, they're missing everything. Yeah. They're missing a lot of people. Yeah, you know? I mean, those yeah, I mean just... if if you gave me if you gave me that character, I'm I'm so passionate about this business that not not only am I passionate about the business, but I'm passionate about taking care of my family. So if you want to give me chicken shit, I'm gonna turn it into, into chicken salad for you. Yeah, you know. Uh, right. Yeah, I mean so, that's respectable. I mean yeah, by all means, it is. Mm -hmm. You know, very very respectable, Jake. Um, so any other questions from you two uh, before I get in to the last couple here? Well, um, I do. I wanted to ask this a minute ago. Forgive me for bouncing all around and stuff, but this was, I just curious how this came about. How long did you, were you working with NWA when they told you you were going to get the belt? So um, my dad was affiliated with NWA. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about, the NWA before uh, Billy Corgan got it, but it was owned by Bruce Tharp. And he had his certain companies that were affiliates. You had the to buy attorney, into, the attorney. But, yep. Yeah, you had to buy in to put the NWA name on your company. So mm -hmm. um, for a good while there, my dad's company was called NWA Top of Texas. Yep. And <laughs> so they would bring the, I'm sorry, uh, every, uh, I think it would be, um, you'd have to have the NWA world title, the NWA tag team titles, and the NWA junior title uh, there at least three times a year. Um, okay. So you had to have three NWA title matches three times a year. Okay. Um, so I got a call from James Beard, who's in Texas, a uh, legendary referee. Yep. Uh, he he contacts me and he's like, "Hey kid, we want to give you a rub." And I was like, "How so?" <laughs> he's like, "We want to put the NWA national title on you." And I was like, "That's huge. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you so much." Um, he said, "We're gonna get it squared away with your dad because we want you to win it in your hometown." Um, so nice. Wow. So I I won it in Amarillo. Um, I won it off of the golden boy, Greg Anthony, who lit, who runs uh, shows in Dyersburg, Tennessee. Um, and yeah, that was, uh, it was a fun rain. I, I had it for about three months. I about three months. Um, and after I won it is when I found out that I was the youngest to ever hold it. Somebody huh. uh, sent me a, a message saying, Hey, you know, you're the youngest to ever hold this title. And I didn't believe it at first. So I started going through the history of the title and everything. And like, sometimes they'll have the ages there. And I was like, Holy crap. Like <laughs> yeah. I just won this at 26 years old. Nobody, right. nobody else has ever won it at this age. Yeah. So it was where does, an honor. Um, yeah. Where does that rank in your career? When in that in your hometown? Um, you know, now that I'm with CYN, uh, See, being a part of CYN is probably the most prestigious opportunity that I have right now because it's okay. something that's so different and it's so unknown while it's being known. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it right. does. Um, it has maybe yeah, I fight on it wrong, Phil. but yeah, um, <laughs> there's a niche, it, yep. it has a niche to it. Yeah, all you guys, been, no offense, look like bad motherfuckers. <laughs> like every yeah. single one of you guys all big boys on that yeah. video look in shape and look like you could fucking just beat the shit out of everybody you see. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. Um yep. no, I, I I everybody, everybody. I mean, I've never seen a bunch of big guys because you don't see big wrestler guys anymore. No offense to anybody, mm -hmm. but you guys look like you can handle your shit, and then you got some the names you guys have brought in is just the cream of the crop in my eyes. 
and guys we, that I like. Each, so. each of us have a story to tell, man. Mm-hmm. There's been some downfalls in our in our past. There's been some really high points in, in in all of us. All of us are from different walks of life, but we all have the one similarity: wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. and through that, we want to tell our story. Yeah, that's no, great. That, that's awesome. So, uh, one of my you know final questions were you know what is something you're most proud of within the wrestling business? I think you just answered that. It's got to be CYN, uh, man. Okay, cool. It's, it's on a different level. Okay. Nice. And then my last question is one I ask anybody from any walk of life that comes on this podcast is, Jake, what do you want to be known for? And when at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, inside of wrestling, outside of wrestling, whatever it is, what would you like to be known for? Basically a guy that was able to take care of his own shit, you know, <laughs> um, whether, whether it be in the ring or for his family. Um, I don't have to have a WWE Hall of Fame you know, induction. I don't have to have a world title. I just want to make sure that I'm succeeding for the people that care about me. That's awesome. Awesome answer. Very well said. Very well yeah. said. For sure. Uh, but Jake, this has uh, been fun, a uh, truly an honor at any point in time. Uh, if you want to use this podcast as a platform of any type of any type, please come, come back. back. Uh, we'd you. love to talk to you, promote anything you want. Um, you know, uh, again. I'll be watching, I'll be watching this control your narrative very, yep. very religiously. Thank you. And, we, uh, 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 just, uh, real quick. We have, uh, we secured a television channel. Ah, nice. Really TV. good for you and, guys. Uh, Congratulations. First will be our first televised event. Now it is going to be a pre-tape, but pro wrestling TV is going to play all of our movies. They're going to play oh, all nice. of our live shows. Um, it's going to be, it, it, it's called pro wrestling TV. It's going to have professional wrestling. Is it a streaming service, Jake? Is it streaming? It's, uh, or? it's a channel. A channel. Okay. Gotcha. So they um, might. You guys are hitting the ground running, man. Service, but you they guys aren't messing around. Running. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. You're not messing around, Jake. No, man. Because no. Hey, you, you only had two shows, right? Two shows. Now you got a TV deal. We had one show. <laughs> one one show, show, TV yeah. deal. That's right. Yeah. And the second and we show had the is... TV deal before we even had a show, man. Oh, wow. wow. So the, second, the, sec- That's awesome. the, the second show is uh, in Dallas Friday night. Yep. Wow. That's... That, that's yeah yeah that's commendable Thank no you. dude this this has been great it's been a lot this of fun awesome. uh anything else you'd like to plug uh plug your dad's promotion again for us real quick yeah again. it's uh Tom and anything texas else pro wrestling in amarillo texas it's every okay. saturday night uh 2650 dumas drive uh and then um cyn at uh in dallas um at uh gillies march 31st um and then if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's uh, uh, at official underscore I'm Jake Logan. Facebook is facebook.com slash I'm Jake Logan. I'm terrible at Twitter. You can give me a follow if you want. <laughs> at I'm Jake Logan underscore um, because I'm Jake Logan, you know. Um, and then uh, pro wrestling tees.com slash Jake Logan. Awesome. Well, Jake, I just want to thank you. And doing this show, you are a friend of the show forever. And thank I you. truly, I truly appreciate it. And I mm-hmm. wish you. And myself, Cable, and Mav wish you the best in this career. To yeah. Control your narrative, and uh, I'm going to be looking. I, I'm really, yeah. I'm real pumped you. up for it. So I appreciate, I appreciate you. you. I appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and, and cool remember, to get to know you. It was cool to meet you. Love Thank your story. You. Love your story. Remember Thank us, you, little people, man. Uh, yeah, we're, tell you, cause, <laughs> we're very uh, you little. Know, <laughs> if, if you're ever feeling down, like what the heck am I doing? Just remember, uh, you heard it here in the the Triple B Experience podcast. You will be just fine. You will make it in this industry. You are a stud of a uh, man. So let's, you know, keep going. Keep hitting the grind, man. So, You're making my wife laugh. Well, that's, <laughs> no, true, man. You you got it. You, you, you just keep it. going. Just keep Thank going. Thank you, so you much. guys. I appreciate you. All right, Jake. It's been fun. We'll talk to you All soon, right. okay? Let's do it again soon. Awesome. Cool.